Hi, welcome to Web Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon and I'm the editor of Web Pixel. I'd like to introduce you to um, our expert in all things underwater and photographic, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So um, often, I think we often concentrate on what we're on the big stuff, the big exciting stuff or the more exciting stuff. So I thought today what I'd ask Alex to do is to look good at the other end of the spectrum and to introduce us to some of his images about nudibranchs and sea slugs. So without any more... Um, nonsense from me. Alex, can you show us your five favourite nudibranch images, please? Well, you're probably going to get some nonsense from me to begin with <laughs> as I try and pad this out and get extra images in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think cheat. one of the things I like about nudibranchs is that, you know, they do have, although they're kind of, you know, weird little marine things, um, they do have this ability to reach beyond our borders. Mm. And, and this book here is um, is a book which many people will be aware of. It's a book called Underwater, um, Unforgettable Underwater Photography. It's a collection of some of the most memorable um, mm. pictures from the, all the years of the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. Mm. Some of the most memorable underwater pictures. It's got Brian Skerry's um, whale shot with um, on the on the cover there, which is, is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but actually, if you you know if you go to the introductory page on this, I'm never going to find it now. I'm chatting, um, but you know right alongside the the main introduction to the book about underwater photography, there is a nudibranch. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my nudibranch shot, and I think it's um, it is you know it's it's amazing that even in a book that's aimed at the mass market that sold Humpback you know, whales. very very well, you know they still get in there. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's something I love about nudibranch photography. It can seem like the geekiest type of underwater photography people can you know sort of question why are you wasting your time shooting these small yes. little slugs mm. um and things like that but actually the shots do do you know are really valuable and do really well i mean um, this picture here um uh, up on the screen now it's just the cover of a diving magazine mm. but all around the world this is a british diving magazine and a british sea slug but all around the world you know nudibranchs make it onto magazine covers yeah um this next one actually is a uh, is, is one of the big university biology textbooks called Life. Yeah. And, you know, my nudibranch's on the cover of that one. You yeah. Know, so oh, it's a sea slug, not a nudibranch, this one. Um, but it's, um, it's, you know, it's amazing that these, you know, that these shots do have this really big appeal. So mm -hmm. although it can seem like the geekiest of geeky types of underwater photography, actually nudibranchs do have that ability to reach out beyond our world. And that's something I really like about it. They're very, they're so, very charismatic for something so small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd like to start now by going through my top five. Yep. Um, although before I, I get to that, I was going to just show you this, this is, I would say that most of my strongest pictures of nudibranchs are these very simple portraits like this one. This is a Hipsal Doris from Bali. Yep. Um, and this is, is just a kind of a classic nudibranch portrait. We, we all shoot shots like this. Nudibranchs look great, you know, particularly when they're coming onto the camera like this or going yep. across the frame. Mm. Nice clean background. This was shot with inward lighting. As a vertical shot on the black sand in Bali, nice and easy to get this clean, crisp shot. But I haven't chosen shots like this for the top 10 just because I think my shots like this, although they're probably the strongest shots I have of nudibranchs, oh. they're not, they're, they're the same as everyone else's. They're the oh. same as, you know, all the good shots of nudibranchs. Oh. And as a result, although they, they sell well, they don't have that same resonance as pictures that are maybe a little bit special, more yep. special to me. So my top 10 is a little bit more varied. And this is oh, top 10, top five. Top five, so, yeah. Easy. So this is the first of my top five, officially top five. And this is a wide angle shot of a aggregation of, of hooded nudibranchs, uh, Malibis, in um, in in, uh, um, in the waters around Vancouver Island in the Pacific Northwest of the of, of, of North America, mm -hmm. um, in Canada, and I I, just, I I know I really love this shot just because it's a, a spectacular wide scene of of the the underwater world, um, but it's it's based around these beautiful nudibranchs that look incredibly attractive um, in the um, in the in in that lighting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, and I like the fact that you know, although we think of nudibranchs as a macro subject, a wide-angle scene I think works really well. Yeah. And actually, these nudibranchs, we didn't go down to shoot them. We were actually we'd done a dive, and just before we were, when we were just when we came out of the water, we were on the boat, and we saw that this little bay had loads and loads of nudies in. And I said to the boat captain, "Look, I've only got you know 60 bar left in my tank or whatever." Um, 
I can go straight down and, and get the shot that I want um, of these nudies. And um, I was there with Todd Mintz and um, Rand McMines and means and we, we and I just said, look, I know what shot I want. I'm going to go down and get it. I was in the water literally for five minutes. I, you know, I was cold after my dive anyway. I went down. I framed this up. I took, did two or three different aggregation groups. Yeah. I did the shot in, you know, literally a few seconds and I was out of the water. And this shot gets printed and published all the time. And, you know, it wasn't even a proper dive. It was like, I think I did log the dive because I wanted to remember it. Yeah. But it was, you know, it literally was not a proper dive. Right. Number two, staying in the cold waters. I think something I really love about nudibranchs is that we do find them. They're not just a tropical thing. They're right the way from the tropics to the poles. Yeah. And some of the more photogenic species, or certainly less photographed and therefore perhaps more memorable mm -hmm. shots, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do come from those northern latitudes. Yeah. Um, and this is a shot I took in Norway. And this is a, a composite shot of 80 frames. Wow. And I took this picture with the D800, um, well, actually when I was just tasting it for review, I think, up there. Um, on, on the Norway, on a nudibranch safari organized up in, up in Gulen Resort in Norway, which I know yeah. you, you know well. Yeah, yeah. And um, this shot here, all these pictures were taken while I was in the water. One of them was a nudibranch taken while I was diving. And then at the end of the day, because it's a winter trip and the days are very, very short sure, yeah. up there, then it was probably at the end of the day, it was probably only sort of five in the afternoon, but it was pitch black. I set my camera up on a tripod on land and, and shot um, star trails um, while I sat in the hot tub um, <laughs> and, then, and then blended the pictures together afterwards. So it's, it's a single exposure. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's all taken with the same camera on the same day in the same place. <laughs> I was in the water for all the shots. Uh, but 80 of them I was in the hot tub. Warmer, um, I was gonna see. warmer for quite a lot of the shots than you were on the, oh, yeah, the hot tub ones. <laughs> and, yeah, and it's just, it was taken really as a little bit of fun. You know, I, I kind of took it a little bit poking fun at Star Trails because the majority of Star Trail shots are taken as composites. Yeah. So I thought, well, if you're taking a composite, why not composite anything in front of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it was kind of taken to take the mickey out of my friends. But actually, it's, it's again, it's a picture that, does do really well it's a picture it's that dramatic. really intrigues people yeah. and although it's obviously not representing a real nature it is all from the same location and it does yeah. capture the experience i was having on that day yeah. so I, I like the picture you know despite the fact it doesn't bear much relation to reality <laughs> um this next shot is a super macro shot of a nudibranch yeah. and this picture was taken on a, a trip where i was um testing a brand new close-up diop to the Moby lens, yep. which was at the time Super the powerful. strongest ever underwater lens. And I was looking for tiny, tiny subjects to capture with it. Yep. And this shot here is, is taken with that lens in, in Analau, which is probably the best place for nudibranchs in the world, Analau in the Philippines. Certainly the diversity of species there and the Amazing. abundance of nudibranchs is very hard to match anywhere else that oh, I've yeah. been. Um, it's a phenomenal destination for nudibranchs, and the dive guards there are amazing at finding them. Yeah. And this particular case, I'd actually gone in super close to do a rhinophore shot. And while, you know, hunting backs and forwards for the rhinophores, I, I noticed this little um, amphipod sitting on one of the um, serrata and thought, oh, that's an interesting super yeah, different. nudibranch. Yeah. And so it's always been a real favorite for mine. I've actually seen this quite a few times uh, on nudibranchs, and, and you get this happening the amphipod doesn't live on the nudibranch the amphipod lives on hydroids yeah. it's quite common all around the world in cold water yeah. and in tropical waters that you get amphipods living in hydroids particularly solitary hydroids you'll find amphipods hiding in they're not necessarily colorful ones but little ones like this and they, i think they hide there because the stinging uh, hydroid is good protection yeah. however when a nudibranch comes and eats its home the amphipod is then homeless and it is stuck there without and um, without anywhere to go. And in this case here, has jumped onto the nudibranch because the nudibranch has eaten its home um, away from underneath it. Um, and a lot of nudibranchs do eat hydroids, particularly these um, aeolid um, flabellina type ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big, right? right, so next up, I'm trying to keep the pace up. I had to include a British picture. And this picture here is a pair of mating polycera nudibranchs. I do think that they, they've just been reclassified polyceras. Um, this species. There's a paper came out last week, and I do think the difference between the two species is whether they've got the speckles or not. 
Oh, really? Uh, and this picture suggests that there may be them. Um, I don't know. I have to. I haven't read the paper yet, but I must go and investigate and find out what species these are. Maybe I'll post it on a nudibranch forum and f get them to identify them for me. Yeah. But if they're mating, it kind of undermines the whole species thing, doesn't it? But yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, I, I, I'm probably getting that, that, that details wrong because I've not read the paper yet. Anyway, I, I like this picture because it's a, it's a memory. I was actually this was taken on the island of Col in the Hebrides in Scotland, and it's a famous place for basking sharks. Mm. And I was up there on a basking shark trip. And as often the way with the basking shark trip, we weren't having a lot of luck. And we just pulled into this bay for having lunch. And just, just you know, the boat was just sort of just drifting in the shallows. And I noticed over the side of the boat that all the kelp was covered in nudibranchs. You know, one of the things that I love in, the, in temperate waters is nudibranchs can often really bloom. Yeah. And, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll, you don't tend to get the diversity of the tropics, but you'll hit sites where you'll see hundreds and hundreds on a dive but all of the same species. Yeah. And these polyceras, they feed on the sea mat, which is kind of the, the chain male that you can see on the kelp leaf behind them. It's a bryozoan, and they, they scoop out the insides, rather like um, scooping out with an ice cream um, scoop. Um, their mouths scoop out the inside of each of those little um, cells of the, um, of the, the bryozoans. Um, and these two were, uh, run into each other there and were mating. So it's a nice mating shot. But I, I like it because I took this not scuba diving, but free diving. Wow. Because on a basking shark trip, I did have a macro lens with me. I put a macro lens in and a, um, a macro port in case of emergency. But I didn't have any scuba trip tips. So it's a macro shot taken free diving um, oh, cool. because there were so many. But it was so shallow that I was you know, probably only a meter below the surface. Yeah. And all I had to do was you know, get the two in the frame. Um, so as a memory, it really, yeah, really, really takes me back there. And then my last one is another sort of memory shot. Uh, and, and this is a, a double exposure of a nudibranch. And I like this shot because it was kind of many months in the planning because the background was taken in Canada and the foreground was shot in Norway. Wow. And when I was in Canada, I was shooting, I shot some kelp forest backgrounds for double exposures to use in Canada. Yeah. But because they, the, the, those pictures were still on my memory card, when I got to, to my, my next cold water trip in Norway, yeah. um, I actually realized, oh, when I was down underwater, oh, I can use this background with this foreground subject and shot this double exposure in camera um, using a, a background from Canada and a, a, a sea slug from, from Norway. Obviously, biologically, completely corrupt image. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, it just, it, it, I find it, it, it fun that it's sort of an intercontinental yeah. nude prank picture. Yeah, yeah. You know, where's this picture from? Well, it's kind of half from the Pacific, half from the <laughs> So, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's certainly my, my, it's my biggest wide angle underwater picture. I've got bits of the North, yeah. North yeah. and bit, or bit Northeast Atlantic, sorry, and bits of the Northeast Pacific quite in lens. the same frame. <laughs> yeah. With, with a macro lens. <laughs> yeah. And that wide angle in the background. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so those, those are kind of, I think, my five most memorable nudibranch pictures oh that's wonderful thank you alex it's a great um, a great tour through 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 nudibranchs um, i i've also been to to N G Gulen for the nudibranch safari and it's an amazing event so yeah it's oh yeah fun. it is um, um so um i'm sure people can see more of your nudibranch images on instagram mm -hmm. who are you on instagram alex um i'm alex mustard one on instagram and on Twitter, Alex underscore mustard, I think. Oh. I really ought to, to get those written down somewhere so I get them right. But yeah. If you type Alex mustard, there's not many Alex mustards around, so you'll find me fairly quickly. Yeah. So, um, and certainly, obviously, there's, there's um, Alex posts all his images regularly, but um, obviously, new rack images on there as well. So, thank you very much, Alex. Um, I'm going to say thanks to Gulen, Gulen Dive Resort Norway, for sponsoring this episode. It was very good of them. Um, and, um, Please feel free to um, like this episode if you enjoyed it and add comments or suggestions in the suggestions box below. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.